I'm up. Ah! Oh, I got another pimple. Hmm, right there. Got the vlog hair in check, sexy ass vlog beard in check. Wait, where's my keys? Where's my keys? Well, I guess there's nothing to do except start this. Welcome to week 21, motherfuckers. I'm trying not to be too loud because I'm gonna scare the shit out of Kata. And I want you guys to win this for the vlog. I'm gonna fuck this shit up. Okay, here we go. Follow me. First, I gotta climb this wall of destiny. Come, come, come with me. She's really gonna break up with me after this. But if I can get a couple more subscribers, fucking hell with it. We got her good, guys. I'm sure I'll get the divorce papers tomorrow You're in the mail. An asshole. But I got her. What a good start to the vlog. And you know what's funny? Today, I'm only moments away from loading week 20, which is fucked up, because now I'm starting week 21. Sounds good. But I just finished watching Bellator 200. And let me tell you, I'm not impressed. I was not disappointed. Sweet. Nice little shout out goes to Phil Davis with the nasty fucking head kick. But let's go into the fights that I actually fucking talked about on my previous vlog. First on the fucking card, we had David the Caveman Rickles against fucking Michael Page. Oh, I remember David Rickles in the pre-fight press conference saying, I'm gonna take his heart. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> bam, bam, bitch. Michael Page did exactly what I hoped he would do. Didn't show any sign of Cage rust. What the fucking ever? He was dancing. He was bobbing. He was weaving, and he almost knocked- What did you just say? We- yeah, weaving. I said- I said it right, man. I'm always self-conscious the way I say this shit now because my girlfriend always beats me up when I say things wrong, man. He's right. It was a beat down from round one to the end of round two. Actually, it wasn't the end of round two. It was very much the beginning of round two. But he almost knocked Dave Rickles out twice, which is perfect. Mm. I like that swing. He was able to maintain that motherfucking distance and pick Dave Rickles a fucking bird. And Dave Rickles was a fucking bitch. Whatever. I thought if he was gonna get knocked out, that's fine. It was gonna be like round one and maybe round two. He got another one and he was getting ground and pounded and then he maybe like verbally submits. At worst case scenario. But he got punched in the face. Yes. Michael Page made fun of him. David Rickles sat there and was like. No, I'm done. I retire. I'm done. He's through. You're a fucking pussy! Pussy! You went all the way out to London for that fucking baby! Let me see this thing. <sighs> wasn't as fun as I thought it would be. Then next on the card, we had Rafael Carvalho, who was at that fucking time the middleweight champion of Bellator, going against Gegard Mousasi, who's literally an MMA vet of every single top prime organization in the fucking world that was ever created. And he went in there and did exactly what I thought he would do. He's just faced too hard of competition to let somebody like Rafael Carvalho make the fight even interesting for him. He took him down, got his back, and simply grounded and pounded him out in the fucking first round. Calm down. Who could have predicted that? Let me think. Me, I can. And I did. I was two for two. Two for two? I'm so happy I can. I can. <laughs> Let's stop for a second. 
Hey, my name's Jesse. Who? I'm the lead star of uh, Six Round Vlogs. You may have heard of me. No, I do. I have almost 1,700 subscribers. Hopefully by the time you watch this, I have surpassed 1,700 subscribers. And if not, <laughs> UFC Fight Night Liverpool was really sick for the most part instead of one fight, but I'll come back to it later. A lot of up and comers. What's wrong, babe? You okay? Sorry, it's just it's easier if I just do it. Just do it. Why? Because then I can see you and I can maybe walk around. Cool, that's hot. Can you see my pecs though? What if I like do this? Does it look natural if I do this? And like, UFC Fight Night Liverpool is sick. Does it look natural? No. What did you say? Elias Theodoro did his mother thing exactly the way I thought he would. He was all over Trevor Smith from the beginning of the first bell to the end of the third bell. Is there a judge that gave him a round? God damn right. F you, bro. He had nothing on Elias Theodoro. And like I said in my previous vlog, hey, nobody got shit in Elias Theodoro. He's gonna crack the top 10. Say it again to my face. By the end of 2018, he'll be up for a number one contender shot. He is putting Toronto, Ontario on the map even more so than anyone has done ever before. We love you, Elias. Yeah, you got bugs? Jesus, they're flying all over me. Go. Listen, the Darren Till fight and Stephen Thompson fight, I have a couple things to say about it. So one, I was pretty damn spot on with the decision. It went to decision. And uh, to 99% of the people in the world, other than those of British descent. Yeah, I'm getting eaten alive. Yeah. you. The mosquito. That's all right. Anyways, the Darren Till fight and Steven Thompson fight, I had a really bad feeling it was gonna go like that. So I went to decision as I had called. Uh, and like I said, 99% of the fucking population, the world's population, minus those of British descent, and rightfully so, you're cheering for your boy. But Darren Till lost that fight, it was clear as day. Bullshit. He got that knockdown down in the fifth round, which is great. But it was Steven Thompson that was pushing the pace of that whole fucking fight. They respected each other too much, and it got on my fucking nerves. Punch you in the face, hey man, nice punch, high five. Hey man, nice kick, high five. Hey, well done, you hit me in the face, high five. Good elbow, high five. Hey, nice abs, high five. It was actually complete bullshit. And you know what? I really have a problem with that because you guys were talking a little bit before the fight. It got a little bit steamy, heated at the winds. Just fight. We understand you respect each other and that's fine, the legal technique. It was in England, but nobody enjoyed that fight. You're getting eaten alive by bugs. Talk faster. Huh? To be honest, I feel like Steven Thompson got robbed. However, Darren Till did his thing when you put two counter strikers against each other and nobody really wants to lose that top tier number one contender spot. It, it's gonna play for either a really amazing fight or a really boring fight because they're too cautious. I should have been four for four in my four predictions this week and fucking robbed. I'm fucking excited. We gotta do something fucking jacked up. Cutscene. Bro four for four and I was almost close to getting 100% and I should have but I got fucking robbed Liverpool which I do to celebrate I'm so excited oh, oh. Ah. Ah. I lost the Gatorade ah. Here's what you're Gatorade I broke the fucking butt cheek A few moments later I thought I was done recording Oh my god Oh I'm so sorry guys I was getting all ready, hence the hat to go outside and get some fucking color because I'm getting pale. I can like blend in with my hat and my shirt right now simultaneously. I look like a ghost. Boo. Boo. Or like a scary scene like I did to Kata earlier. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> we have big fights coming up actually on Friday. A different start time than usual, not your average. This card's sole purpose, in my opinion, is to set up the number one contender at the bantamweight strap. So basically the winner of this fight that I'll be talking about in a few short minutes will be fighting the winner of TJ Dillashaw and Cody Garbrandt. <laughs> TJ Dillashaw. So anyways. You got Jake Ellenberger versus Ben Killer B Saunders. They're both coming off two fight losing streak. <laughs> However, Ben Saunders, his last three fights were against Peter Sabota, Court McGee, and his last loss was Alan Jebwan, who's actually a pretty serious contender, mind you. Oh my God, the sun is in my eye. I'm melting, melting. And he's going up against Jake Ellenberger. Jake Ellenberger's last opponents were all top tier, near number one ranked contenders in the welterweight division. No, come on. He's fought George Masvidal, Robbie Lawler, Steven Thompson, Mike Perry. He's no slouch and he's one hell of a wrestler, which could work against Ben Saunders' game plan. Ben Saunders likes to strike. He's pretty good at jujitsu as well. He likes to go in there and bang. Probably not a good idea to do with Jake Ellenberger. I know Jake Ellenberger's jaw is a little softer than it used to be. Why 
<laughs> However, his hits were hits from amongst the best in the division. Now, I think the game plan here for Killer B, close the distance. Even though he's got a longer reach, he's gonna wanna close the distance and maybe do some dirty boxing. If I'm gonna call this fight, I'm gonna call it a second round, probably submission for Jake Allenberger. Next and last on the fucking card, we have Jimmy Rivera against Marlon Moraes. This is a huge bantamweight matchup. These guys can go to the decision every single time with a full gas tank. That's why this fight is gonna be maybe not a finisher, maybe nobody's gonna get knocked out, but I'm telling you right now, this is gonna be a brawl for five straight rounds. This is what I truly believe. Don't be crazy. I mean, Jimmy Rivera has fought some tough guys by Yuri Alcantara, Uriah Faber, Pedro Munoz, and his last spin was coming against Thomas Almeida, which I mean, <laughs> doesn't seem like much anymore. The guy's always losing. He's true. Then when you look on the other side, you're looking at Marlon Moraes, who just finished knocking out Elijah Min Sterling. What a beautiful fucking knee it was. Jimmy Rivera kind of mirrors the technique and the ability and the gas tank of Rafael Sansão. And Marlon Moraes has already faced defeat against Rafael Sansão. That's why this fight's gonna be a little difficult to give it to Marlon, if you will. You gotta be kidding me. Jimmy Rivera's been around a lot longer. He's fought way tougher opponents. I think you're gonna see him get this victory via decision hands down. I'm, I'm on team Jimmy Rivera all day. Not that it really matters, because to be honest, really this fight's gonna go up and fight TJ Dillashaw, because we all know TJ Dillashaw's gonna knock the hell out of Cody Garbrandt again. And then they're gonna meet up and TJ's just gonna knock the hell out of all of them because TJ has like the best boxing, the best cardio, best head movement in the damn game, the best agility. He has an amazing, amazing coach, Dwayne Bang Ludwig. So this is gonna be fucking, fucking sick. It doesn't really matter because the king of the division is TJ Dillashaw. Where's my girlfriend? Here she is, guys. Look, she's getting her tan on. Hey, babe, do you like my hat? Anyways, guess what we're doing? What? We're wrapping up week 21. Listen, we love you guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the notification bell or else we'll punch you right in the fucking face. What will you do, baby? Kick him right in the fucking teeth, right? Oh, I poke. And team sixth round for life. Listen, we got some things in the work we can't tell you right now. We love you guys and we will see you for week 22. Peace.